five tires in the back of old blue so yeah like I said these have barely been used they have like 5,000 miles on them less than that actually that's all I've used that trailer since new and they've always looked great pardon these mosquitoes we have the springtime scourge going on they're extra bad this time of year but when one of them does this like I said in the last video they're all gonna get replaced so can't believe I drove 40 miles on that with a d2 on top of it and it never blew rather be lucky than good like I say so We'll haul these down to work tomorrow. You can do it, Old Blue. And get those changed out. I ordered the new tires this morning and they were in stock in the Twin Cities area and they actually showed up on the afternoon truck. So those are waiting down at the Ford Prison. I'll probably stay late after work and get those mounted up. Um, in the meantime, there's one more thing I need to do tonight. I need to remove one of these hub and drum assemblies because as long as I have the tires off, the wheels off, I should say, I'm going to repack the wheel bearings. I look back, it's been five years since I did this last. And why did I put this cotter pin in like that? Come on, Squatch. There, we got that. Because, well, because I didn't write down the number on the grease seal, Back. There we go. Not really the right tool for the job, but it was at hand and the mosquitoes are getting bad and the sun and plate is fading. So because I didn't write down the grease seal number back here last time, I don't have it on file. So I can't just call the parts store and get those on order. So I need to get this pulled off tonight, get the seal out of the back of it and get a number off of it, do a cross if necessary, and get four new grease seals ordered up tomorrow. So honestly, not looking bad in there. There we are. And thankfully the shoes still look good. Hopefully that is the case on the other three. Okay. Here and put back here. We've got all of our seal specifications. All that stuff is well and good done. And oh there's even mosquitoes in here. They must have followed me in. Um, that's about all we can do on the trailer for tonight. So yeah, I'll get with the parts store tomorrow, get those seals ordered up. We'll get the tires mounted up well, after our prison sentence and pick back up with you then. Okay, so it's Tuesday after work. We got home, got our run out of the way. It's uh, running day to day, so we did that. Mosquitoes are still horrible, so you know, everything's still normal. Show you what we managed to do today. Got the, come on, the new grease seals from the parts store. So that's good. And I went in early this morning. Get this open with one hand. All right, we'll just do this the easy way. I got all five of the new tires mounted on the rims. So we have four for the ground and one good spare. So, back in the shop now. Considering we have the grease seals, I'm gonna peel the old seal out of this one so I can get this inner bearing out of there. And we're gonna proceed with the bearing repack as long as we have this hub out. There we go. Had to make a mess in there, didn't I? Get that bearing out of there. Little bit of kind of rusty tinted grease around the spindle area, but rollers and everything are looking pretty good. Peel that old stuff out of there. Okay, I'll clean this with solvent and get the bearings packed and we'll move on. Okay, we've got some fresh grease inside the newly cleaned hub, bearings all checked out, packed those full of grease. I know I'm 
going through this kind of fast, but I don't have a whole lot of time for camera work tonight because well, between the run I took after I got home and then I got about two hours of making YouTube in front of the computer to do yet tonight, it's going to be a pretty short evening out here. So we're just trying to get some stuff done while we still have time. So, okay, inner bearing in, everything freshly cleaned, full of grease. Here's the new seal. We'll tap that in place. That looks good. Liking it. Okay, back out at the trailer again and had a good look at the frictions on the brake shoes. Everything's looking good to go there yet. And these have, I might have to get a flashlight in here, the light is kind of fading. These have manual adjusters right down there. You can see it, this piece right here. So I just got done rolling that little thumb wheel on there, a couple clicks up. That accounts for brake shoe wear. It just kind of keeps everything centered out against the drum and we're just gonna do like a test fit. I wanna slide the drum on and just have like a, just a light scrape, not enough to make a drag, but just so that the shoes are there. So that when you, uh, you hit the brakes, everything works properly and starts to engage. These are, well, electric brakes. This is an electromagnet right here. You can see the wires that go to it, come down into the back. And what happens is, well, you have your brake drum and this magnet rubs on the face of it. That's why it's so shiny. So when you hit the brakes on the truck, it sends power back and energizes this electromagnet. It sticks to the drum. And as the drum is rolling forward, it actually actuates that arm right there. You can see that arm cams the brake shoes out. It cams the front shoe out. The front shoe then will contact the drum. It wants to rotate with it. It will act through the adjuster onto the rear drum, rear shoe, sorry, and expands them both out to the drum and then that's how you stop. So yeah, you kind of want to have those things adjusted up well. The magnet still looks good. The inside of the drum looks good. So I'll grease up the spindle and we'll get that put on. Okay, here we go. Let's hope no mosquitoes get caught in our fresh grease, right? There. That's a good sound right there. I like that. Front bearing in. Let's just make sure we can see what we're doing here. Washer. And the nut. Yeah, the mosquitoes are getting bad out here right now. Of course, this time of the evening, anybody still stupid enough to be outside is fair game, right? Okay, I usually... Okay, I usually run that nut down pretty tight. That squeezes all the grease out of the bearings, gets the rollers seated against the races. And we'll back it off. And now, it's just a feel thing. Can't really explain it to you. At least I'm not gonna take the time right now. So I'm trying not to get eaten alive, but I think we're good to roll it to the next available slot in the castle nut, which would be right there. I like it. Okay, we're pinned in place. Grease cap back on. And this used to have the greasable spindles in and I just took the grease zerk out. It has these rubber plugs that seal that hole in the end of the cap. I don't really like them because I'd rather just repack my bearings and know where the grease is going. You shoot grease in there with a grease gun, you don't really know if it's getting in the bearing or not. So I might go to the parts store again this weekend and get some new caps that don't have these plugs because I think they seal better. But for now, we'll pop that one back on. Sounds like we have some rain in the forecast anyway, so. That's gonna keep that all sealed up. Let's get a wheel on. So here's our blazing amount of progress for Tuesday. One wheel. We have one wheel on the ground. Now I've got enough light I could swap over and do 
another one before dark even despite the bugs but i've got about two hours worth of youtube time i need to go and sit in front of the computer and do so yeah by nine o'clock tonight i have to get the this old farm plow day oh my gosh the mosquitoes the this old farm plow day video put up for you guys i gotta flip that onto the public feed and get all that stuff initiated and then i need to start putting together the video that's going to come after that which is what i already recorded before i started recording this one yeah the life of just doing youtube you're always you're not just thinking one day ahead you're like you know four or five days ahead but trying to keep the feed going and if i don't you guys start to think i've been slacking or something so we don't want to have that so all right we'll pick up tomorrow wednesday evening it's wednesday got home from work went for a run again i didn't have to tonight but i well i did anyway so this is what a northern redneck looks like. Well, it's 73 degrees outside and we have our first scant trace of humidity today. I'm melting. Okay, same plan as before. We'll get this hub and drum assembly off. I wanted to show you this tool right here. That's one I brought home from work tonight. It's one of the best tools I've ever found for taking these dust caps off. You can see it's got some teeth in there. It's got like vice grip action and you can tap these with a hammer. It's one I bought off the Mac Tools truck a long time ago, and they've since discontinued it. But I'll tell you what, you get, get it sized on there. Sometimes just working the vice grip action is enough to get it behind that rib. A little bit tighter with it. And you can just pull them right off. doesn't damage them or anything. Awesome tool. If I ever broke or lost that thing, I'd probably cry. <laughs> and I made a mess again. <laughs> And in case you're wondering, yeah, I clicked the shoes up before I took the hub and drum off with the old bearings in it. Considering I didn't have to show what I was doing this time, that was a much more efficient way of getting those adjusted without having to take this on and off a couple times with that new grease seal on the back, risk hurting that. So that's what happened there. Okay, so catch up on what's been happening. We've got the back axle done, all right? Just pulled this hub and drum off here. We already have the brakes clicked up, spindle has been cleaned, bearings are packed, new seal in that one, but it's a good time to stop for a thumbnail picture. Sometimes, well, I should say most times, YouTube does not give me a random sampling that's any good at all, so I'll move this thing a little bit closer. There, it's a little bit better. Okay. I think we're all right here. We'll do something like mm, that. Good enough. All right. Set to go. Okay, everybody. So, both wheels on this side. Walk around the other side real quick. We took it right up just about until dark tonight. About 15 more minutes. You won't see anything else, but... We have two wheels on this side too. So all the hubs are on, bearings are repacked, brakes are all adjusted, and 
we're still up on jack stands, so tomorrow night I'll get it off the stand to get wheels on the ground. We can torque those wheels, see what other uh, adventures we can do or we can have with this thing before we can call it done. I think uh, let it down, torque the wheels, and make sure I got all the pressures right when I mount the tires. And I think we're about done with this project. So, yeah, before it gets any darker out here, well, I got to pick up a few tools and see you again tomorrow evening. And I'll tell you what, everything's been working just way too well tonight. We have it off of the stands. Wheels are all back on the ground. Everything's at 80 PSI. I was going around with the torque wrench, clicking every one of these lug nuts until we get to this little piggy right here. He decides he's not going to tighten in. To nutshell it, the whole stud and everything is spinning in the hub back there. These are a friction fit. They have a shoulder on the back and some straight splines that engages with the metal to keep that from turning. And yeah, if I can't even reach torque on the tightening you're never going to get this thing back off again so you would be stuck on the side of the road with a wheel that you can't get off because that thing just spins and spins and spins and that nut's not going to move so guess who gets to take that whole hub and everything back off again and then guess who gets to drive that stud out and guess who gets to take it in the parts store tomorrow to see if he can get another one and then hope that the new one's going to tighten in and not spin and not going to give you problems you can finally get this thing done and it quit being funny three days ago and there's still mosquitoes out here. That's the scoundrel right there. Okay, so pretty much done being mad. You know, mostly because I get to go look at something else for the rest of the evening now. Happy Friday, everybody. So got the day off of work today. Probably a good thing because the way it's looking, I'm gonna need all day just to finish this dang trailer. So yeah, just back from the parts store. And you see that shiny little stud in there? Yep. So they were able to match one for me and it was just about a quarter inch longer. So I just had to uh, shorten it up a little bit. And I'll tell you what, that's the tightest stud in that whole hub. I'll guarantee it. The press had a heck of a time putting it in there. Luckily the fluted section back behind was just a little bit bigger. So that one's not gonna turn anymore. And well, as long as I was there, It's only another hundred bucks, right? Ugh. At this point, my gosh. Anyway, so we sourced uh, four solid dust caps to replace these ones with kind of that janky rubber plug in there. So yeah, these are gonna seal up a lot better. We got that handled. Now, you can see the old style acorn nuts that were on this thing. I decided to go with the capped off lug nuts. Now, I did this to the uh, enclosed trailer a couple years ago. And what it does is it, actually protects the studs and everything from getting any kind of rust and corrosion this thing sits around so much it really helps to uh to prevent headaches and i'm pretty sure the reason why this one decided to spin on me was we had a little bit of rust that was kind of beneath the lug nut and the impact kind of grunted funny a couple times you know when i was trying to take this thing off and it finally loosened up and came off but i'm pretty sure that's what started that stud to turning and then once it broke free and kind of augered itself out a little bit in there yeah, even after I put the new nut on, the thing was still turning anyway. So good news, bad news kind of thing. Good news is they had, we have 20 that they had in stock. But because we have, you know, like eight lugs per wheel on this thing, I need 32. So I get to take another trip to town this afternoon to get the last few packages. Luckily, those things are going to show up this afternoon sometime. So you know, before they close, I'll be back in town. Pick them up. Maybe then we can finally finish this project. When you live out here in Hickville, a trip to town's not exactly a five minute deal, but you know, maybe by then I'll be ready for some delicious ice cream at the Dairy Queen. So make the trip worth it, right? Um, we're still just kind of over it. So I'm just gonna put this back together. I'm putting the camera away. We're just gonna get it done. I'll get this hub, the wheel back on. We'll get all those new lug nuts on. And boy, I'm really ready to be done with this job. Okay, everybody, I finally got it back together. Yeah, it only took me five days between work and the tube and everything else and unexpected runs to the parts store. We're up to three at this point, two of which were today. We took it for a nice little uh, 10 mile roundabout beat and rechecked lug nut torque. Everything's good. Wheel bearings are running nice and cool. Brakes are feeling good, plenty responsive, liking all that. So, <laughs> 
I think we're finally done. I got to get this thing off the truck before it breaks again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I wanted to say, yeah, thanks to a lot of people in the comment section under the last video where I talked about the blown out tire. Uh, a lot of good recommendations on tires, a lot of negative opinions on tires. I can see it's almost as divisive of an issue as engine oil, so we might not be going there. But how long are the tires that I bought going to last? Well, in a perfect world, the next owner will be able to tell you. It won't be me. So um, the only downside, I even had a couple offers of, uh, hey, if you uh, have some time, I could probably get you some at cost. Let me know. The problem is the feed here runs several days to a week behind where I actually am. So I started filming this whole thing on Monday and the prior video where I showed you guys blown on tire didn't even uh, go live on the public feed until Thursday. So yeah, we'd already had tires purchased and we're most of the way through the wheel bearing repack by that time. And I think we're only on our third unexpected setback at that point. I think we hit about five on this one, I don't know. But yeah, lots of uh, excellent offers for help and I do appreciate it. So yeah, trouble is, timing doesn't always work out so <laughs> one last thing i gotta give a shout out to mr rick bork he was happy that i didn't blame him for the blown out tire but then he was mad that nobody picked up on that total line of bs i dropped in the last video about my call sign on the railroad being swagger he was waiting for somebody to bring that up in the comment section and then nobody did and then he's like i can't believe it and then i was like well, i could see how they could see how i could pull off a swagger and then his head almost exploded it was great so yeah that was that was that was bs but all right yeah we're gonna get this off the trailer and like i said before something else breaks only took me a week and for those of you asking about the d2 updates this is pretty much my routine all summer long i'm kind of like uh what d2 at this point um yeah just this kept me busy for about three days longer than what i had intended but We've got it done. So thanks for watching, everybody. On to the next adventure, right? <laughs>